morning, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning vlog. Good morning. We missed you last week. Yeah, we went to Cleveland, Ohio, for crying out loud. We did. And as is always the way with vloggers, <laughs> we took our cameras with us, so that means you're going with us. Yeah, we weren't going to vlog anything, but once we got there, we decided, what the heck? And you know what? It turned out to be about 25 minutes long, so... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to do. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. You know, after making YouTube videos for going on four years and capturing what's going on in our life, <laughs> it's almost impossible for us not to do it. It just doesn't feel right, you know what I mean? So come along to the airport with us and let's head east. Last year, Las Vegas made the top 10 on the world's busiest airports list. And if you've been here, you know the truth of that. Although we hear lots of horror stories about delayed and canceled flight these days, ours was on time and believe it or not, hassle free. What a terrific view of the strip from the runway on this gorgeous Saturday morning. We are taking off towards the east and that gives us a perfect bird's eye view of Sunset Park. Beyond that, what used to be Wayne Newton's Casa de Shenandoah. Wayne Newton's house down there. I don't know if you can hear me, but we are on our way to Cleveland, Ohio. On a, uh, my first time in three and a half years being on a jet, so a little bit nervous, but it was a pretty smooth takeoff, so. You've got spectacular views. I love it. There are lots of clouds over the middle of the country, so I'll catch back up with you when we're ready to land. Three and a half hours later, we're on approach to the Cleveland metropolitan area. For those of you who may not be from the USA, Cleveland is one of those early port cities on the Great Lakes. In fact, it's the largest city on Lake Erie. It was founded way back in 1796, and today about 2 million people live in the greater Cleveland metro area. First thing we desert dwellers notice is, man, oh man, is it green. Stay tuned, we are going to talk more about that a little bit later on. All right, you know the drill. Seat belts fastened, portable electronics properly stowed, seat bags and tray tables in our upright and locked positions were about to land. Welcome to Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland is home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and as soon as you arrive in the airport, you are reminded of how proud the city is of this world-class facility. The script Cleveland sculpture can be found in several picture spots around town, including the airport. We booked our room on the west side of town close to the airport at the Hampton Inn. Now trust me, the room was so small it wasn't worth the film to do a room tour. <laughs> and honestly, for what we paid, we both said we could have stayed at the Venetian. We grabbed dinner at one of our favorite spots in the area, the Harry Buffalo. <laughs> Look at this. This is what we had to contend with for the first two and a half days of our stay. When we say rain, <laughs> we mean rain. Well, we're still on West Coast time, so nothing left to do except, you guessed it, go find the nearest Applebee's for a nightcap. You know, my friends, I have not traveled in three and a half years. I do live in the most exciting city in the world. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. Traveling is exhausting. But you know what the best thing about it is? Every place you go in this country, there's an Applebee's. 
Cheers. Next day, we found ourselves at one of the local malls to meet a friend. It was a Sunday afternoon, and we were flat out amazed by the experience. This is South Park Mall, one of the largest shopping malls in the United States at almost 1.7 million square feet, housing more than 170 stores and restaurants. All right, my friends, we are in Strong, or no, yeah, Strongsville, Ohio. We came to the Strongsville Mall. There's not a parking spot to be had in the parking lot. This is the Eat Street. It's absolutely mobbed. We came here to meet a friend. I don't think we're ever gonna find her. <laughs> this is, who said malls are dead? Well, hey, it's been a challenging couple days here in Ohio. Torrential, torrential rains and flooding. It's Armageddon over here, but it's a beautiful Monday morning and we are at Huntington Beach on Lake Erie. It's just perfect over here. So I'll take the moment of grace for sure. Huntington Reservation, west of the city of Cleveland on the shores of Lake Erie, is part of the Cleveland Metro Park system and a must-stop for Paula and me whenever we're in town. At water's edge is a sand beach with swimming. And up here is a newly installed picnic area with festive lights and a fire pit. Steps away from that is a snack bar and ice cream cones. Also part of the 100 feet acre Huntington Reservation is a serene little hideaway known as the Bay Arts Cultural Arts Center. Here on this community art campus you'll find historic old homes turned into quaint shops. A vintage caboose. original seats from Cleveland's iconic stadium. and a gorgeous garden of lush plants and artwork. Founded in 1948, Bay Arts is a premier West Side destination for visual arts and cultural events. Now I just have to say that we have our share of community parks in Las Vegas, but today we are exploring the best in class. Named 2021 best park in the nation, the Cleveland Metro Parks. The park system came to be over 100 years ago in 1917 and includes 18 reservations that pretty much encircle the entire city, earning it the name the Emerald Necklace. This is the Rocky River Reservation, which is the first parcel of land obtained for the parks. The Metro Parks encompass 24,000 acres in all, with 300 miles of trails to walk, bike, or ride on horseback. There's plenty of unspoiled forest, plus a few whimsical features along the way. The 
The native wildflowers and plants have been carefully placed here in what's called a food forest model to support soil and water retention and provide food and shelter for the animals. Get this, the park is also a way station for monarch butterflies on their north-south migration path. Rocky River itself was once a warm sea, perhaps even 350 feet deep and home to prehistoric fish species. Over time, the sea mud hardened into the gray flaky rock called shale. You can see that in the cliffs over there. The reservation follows the winding course of the river almost to Lake Erie. Nestled in the woods here is one of several nature centers in the metro parks offering the full visitor experience. This one is the Rocky River Nature Center. Let's go check it out. There is definitely a lot going on in here. There are displays on ancient and pioneer cultures, local wildlife, and even prehistoric fossils. This display depicts the earliest life in the area and how people survived by using the natural materials and wildlife at hand for food, tools, and weapons. Over here is what the interior of a cabin in pioneer days might have looked like. Mills powered by the river were common back in the 19th century and water power was used to turn granite mill wheels just like this one. This fellow was a huge and important find here at Rocky River Reservation. A fossil preserved in the shale deposits we saw earlier. It's a prehistoric fish called Dunkelosteus. It's believed to have been as large as a killer whale and lived in the shallow ocean that used to be here. This skull is actually a model. The original is at the Museum of Natural History. Over along the windows is a large display of animals local to the area. And from what we've been told, there's actually some fine fishing in Rocky River as well. Now, according to the info card on this green frog, the male is supposed to make a twangy banjo pluck sound. <laughs> However, I waited as long as I could and there was no banjo playing frog on this day. Also at the Nature Center is Hideaway Hollow, a children's discovery area disguised as a giant oak tree. And of course, the obligatory gift shop. And I just had to buy a green frog. Future Paula here. I have to interrupt. I just want to say how fun and refreshing it was to do all the research and put the script together on a project that was on something other than Las Vegas. I really had a good time with it. It was, I don't know, it was energizing. I hope you're liking it. All right, one more historical segment to go. Stay tuned. Welcome to the western suburb of Olmsted Falls, Ohio, home of Grand Pacific Junction. Grand Pacific is a charming historic district with about 30 buildings anchored by this magnificent hotel circa 1840. The building as you see it now was restored in the 1990s by local realtor Clint Williams and he added those dormers you see on top. It was in fact a hotel until 1888 when it was sold and became a hardware store. There's an homage to the hardware store on the back side of the building. 
The Grand Pacific Hotel was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1975, and today it is a banquet room and party center. Across the lane from the hotel is another historic building, the Waring Homestead, circa 1830, which is now an inviting and trendy bistro. It was during the 1990s that these buildings were lovingly restored and turned into this charming destination. The jailhouse was built in the 1860s. The spa building hails from 1897. The flower and feed is a restored farmhouse from 1834. And the boutique is circa 1895. From the rear parking area, stroll towards the main road and pop into the bridal shop. The Barber. or the Italian restaurant. The inner courtyard features more vintage buildings that now house shops and eateries. It's a gathering spot for locals on a summer day like this one with lots of benches and lots of flags. There's even a pond with a waterfall. and a hundred-year-old tree just to add character. What a sweet slice of Americana. Now, if you're a fan of Paula's Kitchen, this place might ring a bell. Earlier this year, Paula made a recipe that was submitted to an Ohio cookbook by the folks at Clementine's, stuffed cabbage soup, and judging by your comments, it was a huge hit. Clementine's had just closed for the day when we went by, but the sign of chintz that it may have been a livery stable in an earlier life. Now, what's this on the other side of Clementine's? <laughs> Along with history, we sure love food, and that definitely looks like a food line. Falls Ice Cream is run by a father and daughter team who've been scooping large portions of their fresh handmade ice cream since 2006. We couldn't resist. We went to the ice cream parlor. He got vanilla. He's so boring. And I got pralines and caramel. All right, we got to eat. They're dripping. They're dripping I all over you. <laughs> and of course, every gathering of historical buildings has to include the necessary receptacle. Can't the fella get a little privacy here? At the rear of the property is parking for your buggy. And over there, a white gazebo perfect for a summertime wedding. A 1922 Vulcan steam engine and caboose are the focal point of this area and absolutely perfect for a fun pick. Running alongside the shopping district is Plum Creek. And on the other side of that, an actual train track. <laughs> Tell you what, we couldn't have timed this one more perfectly if we had scripted it. All right, it's time we stop for some grub, so let's wrap up this adventure at one of our favorite watering holes in the Cleveland area, the Hairy Buffalo. <laughs> we absolutely love this place for its menu. late hours, and this terrific outdoor patio. You might remember earlier in the video that this is the place we ate when we first got off the plane. 
For those of you who know us, you know that we are always going to choose a seat in the bar area. Hi guys. I'm not sure if the music is too loud, but we've been coming to this place. This will be our third time here since we've been here. This is our last night here in Ohio. And we came back to the hair of Buffalo. We're going to meet a couple of friends here. And we thought, we like it so much. Why not vlog it and show you guys what it's all about. Next time you come through Ohio in North Olmsted, you can come into the Harry Buffalo and give it a try yourself. Harry Buffalo is a Cleveland-based bar restaurant chain that has been around since 1996. There are seven locations, and this particular one offers seating options for all the games and any weather. There's a huge wraparound U-shaped bar, a roomy dining room, and a bar area with high tops. Shout out to the fun signage in here as well. The best feature of the Harry Buffalo is this, the patio and outdoor bar. You gotta admit, it looks kinda magical with the sun shining in. No filters here, folks. It actually looks like this. All right, enough sightseeing, we're here for the food. Harry Buffalo's menu offers elevated versions of all the typical bar food favorites, plus several dishes featuring fresh American bison. All right, my friends, Paul got herself a buffalo chili and we ordered a pizza for the whole table. I'm gonna give it a shot right now. I've never had pizza here. Yeah, that's true. We've never had pizza at the Harry Buffalo. What do you think? Oh, I, oh. That's pretty good. That's very good. Outstanding. So of course this place is known for fresh bison and last time we talked to them it was actually out of South Dakota. Every time I come here I order bison chili because it's incredible. So let me just have a bite. Look at the thickness of that chili. Oh, I love this. It's heavenly. <laughs> Best chili ivory. Well, hey, in the immortal words of Zach Brown, four days flew by like a drunk Friday night and we're already westward bound. Sitting on the left side of the plane, I had the perfect view of the Colorado River, the Glen Canyon Dam, and a huge canyon, which we think is the Grand Canyon. So, let's talk about Lake Mead. You've probably seen a rash of videos on YouTube lately about the water levels in Lake Mead and what that means to the future of Las Vegas. Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the United States, and in late July, water levels were at their lowest since the 1930s when Hoover Dam was built. But we've had the wettest monsoon season in 10 years this summer, and some estimates have the water levels rising as much as 32 inches. Now, that being said, Lake Mead still has a long way to go. And here we are, back in Las Vegas, that improbable jewel in the desert. We just want to thank everybody for coming along with us on our little summer break, and look at this, we're just in time to catch the sunset on the way home. Well, listen, so many of you have said you want us to get an RV and head across the country. <laughs> so that was a little preview of our future RV days. Is that what that was? Paula, <laughs> I could barely do three and a half hours on a plane. I was exhausted. <laughs> How am I going to do seven days in an RV someplace? But hey, America is fun out there. We can find all kinds of cool things to vlog. I mean, banjo playing frogs? Honestly, <laughs> where, where else can you find a banjo playing frog but here on our, on, our, uh, on, our channel. on our channel. So I hope you enjoyed that. Cleveland is a very interesting place and a very nice place to go visit too if you happen to be in that area. Just avoid the rain. <laughs> yeah, try to avoid the rain. So we did meet up with a lot of you folks and we're going to insert some of those pictures right now. This is Christopher from the TSA in Cleveland who's a big fan of our channel. He met us while we were coming off the plane and escorted us to baggage claim.
We just want to thank every last one of you who took time out of your busy days to meet with us, spend time with us, reminisce, make some nice memories. We love y'all. And the big surprise of the whole weekend was my brother and his wife, Barb, drove down from Canada, the old homestead, and met us in North Homestead. They did, and we threw Gary on camera. I put the camera on him, and uh, this is what he said. We're just getting our uh, food right now, and I'm being uh, <coughs> videoed by my brother. By the famous. The famous, infamous, and I want you to know I'm going to eat right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what can I say, folks? Uh, it, he's chip off the old block, right? Any though, don't quit your day job, Gary. <laughs> All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these nice people, Miss Paula? Hey, I think you just spent half an hour going on vacation with us. Thank you for that. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye, -bye everyone. Bye, everybody.